first and then we'll go live. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, she just gave me my paper. I, was, I showed up without it. I checked up light. So let me do the announcements first. Hallelujah. Really, I'm just killing time because I only prepared 40 minutes worth of preaching. Hallelujah. Everybody said praise the Lord for that. All right. Man up tomorrow night, September 2nd, 6 o'clock. And we'll have Thrive Youth as well. Our midweek service is at 7. We're going to hear the personal testimony of Thomas Rhodes. Praise God. And then Sister to Sister is going to be on Thursday, September the 5th at 6.30. Now, let me, let me encourage you, but also admonish you that if you can make man up or sister to sister, God will bless you abundantly if you'll just give him just a little bit more of yourself. Amen? So if you're sitting at home watching TV or playing cards or playing dominoes or, or mowing the grass on Wednesday, uh, Monday night, put the lawnmower up and come on up the man up. Amen? All right, got one man up. I got one man up guy to say amen. Huh? Sister, sister, sister to sister is starting a new study. I'm sorry I didn't read that. That's okay. They're starting a new study. Is there a name? Girls with swords. Girls with swords. Ooh. Girls with swords. Your life going. Hallelujah. Well, praise God, we are live, and I want to welcome everyone that's joining us by live stream this morning. Praise God. I want to get right into the Word this morning. Hallelujah. And get you all out of here early. How about that? Be turning in your Bibles there to 1 Peter chapter number 3. 1 Peter chapter number 3. And even while I was in the Philippines and uh, I listened to Brother Austin preach, I listened to Brother Buck preach, uh, I listened to Brother Austin preach again when we got home. Uh, but over the last few weeks, the Lord's put several messages in me to bring to this body. Messages that are relevant to the body of Christ and especially those uh, here at Hill Country Cowboy Church. Now, I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying I'm going to preach and teach every one of them. But just so you'll know, I've ordered DoorDash for 3 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Seriously, though, the Holy Spirit has given me a message that is relevant to the times in which we're living it's not a message that you haven't heard, and it's not a message that you won't hear again in the, in the future. You'll probably be hearing about it until we go home to be with the Lord. Amen? But for some time now, probably uh, on and off for the last two or three years, God has been leading me to teach on being consecrated toward Him being dedicated to the Word of God and separation, separating yourself from this present world. He's in, been impressing on the church. And I've told y'all this, we, I believe we are living in chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation right now where God goes to the churches and warns them well, he encourages them first to say, hey, I know what you're doing. You're doing all these things good. But let me warn you, here's what you're doing that's against my word. And if you read those two chapters and the ones that were breaking his uh, covenant, he said, I will remove your candlestick. That means I will remove your light. Serious business, guys. So if we, indeed we are in those two chapters, don't you think it's high time we start getting right? and spending more time with the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen. <clears throat> he said, I want you to come out from amongst the world. I truly believe it grieves the heart of God to see what's happening in the church today. The casualness of the church. The complacency of the saints of God. The sinful nature that's being introduced into the church of today. 
And uh, here's the worst thing, the church being okay with it. Well, we got to be all inclusive. No, we don't. There's no inclusiveness in the Bible. He said, come out from amongst them. Amen? So the Holy Spirit's leading me once again to teach. Teach the church, that's you and me, on separating ourselves unto the Lord. I've appropriately titled this message, Separating Yourself Unto the Lord. That's a no-brainer, right? Amen. Now, separation does not mean that you can't have and do fun things. It does not mean you can't go on vacation. We just went on a vacation to the Philippines. It don't mean you can't enjoy time with your family, going to the beach or going fishing or whatever activities you want. God wants us to enjoy our life here. Amen? But at the same time, I believe God is calling the church to a higher way of living. Maybe cutting just a little bit of the immoral stuff out of our lives. I may not be talking to anybody in here. Maybe just talking to people by live stream. But God wants us to clean up, and I'm going to show you that in the Word. He's calling us to a higher place with Him. To a higher way of living. And if you and I really desire to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ at a different level, higher than the level that you're on right now. You're a work in progress, but God never said you just sit down and wait. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. If we want to go to a different level, then we're going to have to put some time in. We're going to have to do what it takes to build a a better and a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Amen. In other words, I have to work on my relationship with the Lord and you, turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking about you, and you have to work on your relationship with the Lord. And that's part of the works that I talked about a few weeks back. Not that you can work your way into heaven. Our work is to build a closer relationship with God. Amen? It is to separate ourselves from unbeneficial activities that we may have in our life. And it may not be necessarily be sinful activities. It may just be something simple, like maybe a re- rearranging your priorities, rearranging your day to maybe put God first, just an idea. I mean, maybe you to- uh, t- uh, tore uh, Matthew 6.33 out of your Bible. But mine still says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all that other stuff you're jumping after and going after will be added to you. And it'll come easier, praise God. Hallelujah. Did he bring me a straw? Okay, that's all right. Praise the Lord. If I get liquid on the front of me, it's not my fault. Sometimes I think those lids are dribble cups. Hallelujah. Can I just be me? Oh, thank you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you have to work on your relationship with the, uh, with the Lord. Amen? In other words, getting those unbeneficial activities out of your life. Hallelujah. Rearrange your priorities so you can spend more quiet time with the Holy Ghost and with the Lord. In other words, it's just having the attitude that you're not satisfied with where you are because the very moment you get satisfied with where you are in Christ Jesus, let me tell you something, that's as far as you'll ever go with it. He said, I will add to those who add to me. He said, if you have, I'm going to add to you. If you don't have, if you want to just sit in a pew, just sit in a pew. You got to meet him. You know, I, I, I don't remember who told me this. Might have been my bride. She's so smart. You know, Jesus only healed the people that went to him. He never went to anybody else 
that he didn't see it, the need first. Even they say, well, well, no, he went to that house and they let that guy down through the roof. Yeah, but they tried to get to him first. And he couldn't get to him. Jesus never healed. He only healed those who came to him. He said, I'll, everybody that comes to me, I'll give them life. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, listen, I thank God for what he's done in my life. And I know you do too. But how many know there's more for us to reach for? How many of you know you haven't arrived? How many of you know that you didn't get out of a boat this morning and walk on water? Amen. How many of you... Uh, have uh, spoken to a storm lately. I know a few hands are going to go up, but everybody ought to be speaking to the storms. Amen? You know, the storm can be anything. It don't necessarily have to be weather. It can be a storm in your life. It could be a mountain in your life. Are you crying about your mountains? Or are you speaking to your mountains? Just asking for a friend. I know in my life, God's brought me a long way, and I'm grateful for that. But I'm here to tell you, even after 27 years of serving him, I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. And my, unsa and my unsatisfaction is what's going to keep me reaching for more of him. Yeah. Reading more, studying more, praying more. I want to know God so well. I want to be, like he says, uh, I'm drawing a line in the sand. And I want to be standing right by his side holding his hand. Amen. And the only way for me to do that is to put more time into His Word. To pray more. Amen. All right. Let's move on. Praise God. Listen to me. It's only your unsatisfaction with where you're at that is going to motivate you to do something about where you're at. I'm going to say that again. It's only your unsatisfaction with where you're at in Christ that will move you and motivate you to grow in Christ more. Can you say amen? amen. And in other words, until there's a dissatisfaction of where you are spiritually, you'll never push forward spiritually to that place you've never been yet. See, there's a place in God that you haven't been. He's, he's always says, come up higher. Come up higher. Come up higher. How many of you want to go up higher? Amen. The rest of you need to wake up. I'm asking questions. It, re it requires a response. Amen. Don't play like you're reading your Bible. I used to do that in church. That's just me. I used to sit on the front row in that church in San Antonio. And some days I would just, man, I just, even though I love the word, I would find myself wanting to doze off. Everybody's laughing right now. knows what I'm talking about. And to, and to make sure the pastor didn't call me out, because he was the kind of a man that would. Okay? I would put my Bible in my lap, and I'd look down at it like I'm reading. I even got to where I could turn the pages while I was asleep. <laughs> so nobody knew I was sleeping in church. So every time I look around, and I see somebody looking down at their Bible and you're not paying attention to my questions, I'm thinking, well, there's me right there, sleeping. Hallelujah. Now everybody's going to stay awake. Hallelujah. Everybody say, praise the Lord. <laughs> but unless you're unsatisfied spiritually, you're not going to change. I believe what is uh, so grieving to our Heavenly Father is seeing the church as a whole accepting the doctrines or the ways of this present world. And the truth of the matter is the church, not the building, but the people sitting in the church need to be awakened to their spiritual condition. That there's uh, an awakening that they're not, or they may not be where they used to be. Man, you start on fire with God, and then all of a sudden you just get a little bit more complacent. You know, some, some, some mounds come in your life, and which kind of gives you a setback. You quit reading your Bible as much. You quit praying as much. 
that there's got to be an awakening, awakening that you're not where you used to be. There's got to be an awakening that they may have grown complacent in their spiritual growth, that their relationship with the Lord has grown cold. You need to keep the fires burning. Amen? You're the only one that can do that. God's not going to just automatically just zap you with the uh, fire of his glory and for a hunger for his word. You got to want it. I said, you got to want it. You have to have an awakening in your life. You have to be made aware of your spiritual condition and that awareness or that being made aware will only come through the word of God. You can't get it any other way. Amen. You have to get into the word. How many times has pastor said that? <laughs> Amen. And I'm going to keep saying it until the rapture of the church. You cannot grow. You cannot get to know God without getting to know his word. He is his word. Amen. I said, amen. amen. Man, I thought I was going to have to go all the way back to page one. Hallelujah. You have to get it through his word. Second Timothy chapter three, number, uh, verse number 16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. But you know what? The word bringing reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness or right living has no place in your life unless you're willing to yield to that word. You have to be willing to yield to God. How many of you would uh, raise a hand this morning and say, I'm willing? I may not have been yielding to him yesterday, Pastor, but right today, I'm willing to yield to God. There's been a hand, few hands go up this far. You know, it's like, amen. I'm willing to give my all because he gave his all to me. Hallelujah. You know, Brother Austin said something in one of his messages. I can't remember which one. But it reminded me of being hungry for God's word. He said in one of his messages, he says, change only comes when change comes. Get a hold of that. Change will only come into your life when change comes into your life. Who's the changer? You are. God ain't going to change you. He can't. He can't go against his word. And he gave you dominion over your life. He said, John, you're in charge of your life. You won't change? Change what you're doing. I did a message that says, change the way you think, you change the way you live. Also did another message that says, and I may do them again, change the way you talk. And you'll change the way you live. Because they're all tied together. But change ain't coming unless you bring change. Can you say amen? And I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss out on anything God has for me. So I'm going to be willing to every day, every moment of every day, be willing to change when God points something out in my life. Can you say amen? I'm going to do whatever it takes and make any changes I need to make so that it aligns my life with God's word. Are you with me this morning? Yes, so, now that we're all committed to change, we need to ask ourselves, are we living a separated life? Are we living a consecrated life? Are we living a life that's dedicated to the Lord? And before you answer, I need you to know something. A separated, consecrated, and dedicated life unto the Lord can only happen when you yield your will to God's will. Jesus knew that. He said, not my will, Father, but your will be done. Amen. You have to say the same thing. I had to say the same thing. Father God, not my will, but your will. The life I now live on this planet, I live under the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It'll only come when you, will your, uh, when you yield your will to God. 
It'll only come when you stop living for yourself and you live your life for the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the things that Brother Austin also kept saying, he said, everything God has is in Christ. Okay, I want you to write these words down. To whom? Through whom? In him? And through him? Now, your homework is get in your Bible and find out in the New Testament how many times those words are in there. The Bible tells us everything God has, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's okay, it's the Holy Ghost. Everything that God offers is through Jesus Christ. It ain't through what I do. Amen. It's not because I'm a pastor. It's not because Jake is a praise and worship leader and man, he can bless us with music. It ain't because Thomas has a great testimony. That's part of it. But it's through us getting into the Word of God and changing our life to look like His Word. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. In other words, consecration is you and me coming to an end of just living for ourselves and submitting our lives, our whole lives, to do God's will. And that's, not, and that's what God is calling every Christian to do. But there has to be a separation. Everybody say separation. separation. Tell your neighbor, I have to separate from this world. That was awful weak. So don't say it if you don't mean it though. Amen. I have to have a separation from the things of this world. Amen. So let's begin here. That was my introduction. Let's begin here in 2 Peter chapter number 3. And I want to start reading with verse number 10. I used this scripture here a while back. I don't remember which sermon I preached, but it, it, it rang true to me again when the Holy Spirit gave it to me. It says in verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. I want to say right now, if you're watching, he won't come as a thief in the night. You'll know when he's there because you're ready. Amen. Amen. He's only going to come as a thief in the night to those who are out doing other things at the night. That's who he's talking to. He says he's going to come as a thief. Not that he is a thief, but he's going to come as a thief in the night. Amen. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Underline that in your Bible. And ask yourself, the next time you put your job, the next time you put your bank account, the next time you put everything else before God, ask yourself, is that going to get burned up? The answer is going to be yes. The only thing that's not going to get burned up is your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Verse number 11. I mean, that's motivation to me. Why would I want to chase the things of this world if it's all going to burn up? Just asking for a friend. Verse number 11. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord. In other words, there's an anticipation or there's an excitement about Jesus' coming that you and I are looking forward to it. Amen? We're not just sitting around on the pews or sitting around at home waiting for His coming, but we're pressing forward toward Him. Amen? And we're continually developing our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ until He does come. I'm going to keep moving forward with God until He, the trumpet sounds and I meet Him in the air. Amen? Amen. Listen, I don't just want to know about God. I want to have a personal relationship with Him. How many of you want a personal relationship with the Lord? Amen. I'm going to ask again. 
How many of you want to have a personal relationship with the Lord? Amen. We need to, we need to let Him know. Okay? You need to let your neighbors know. You may have a neighbor that's not really wanting to raise their hand because they're embarrassed. But if you'll start waving at Jesus, maybe they'll start waving at Jesus too. Can you say amen? amen? Lift up holy hands, praise God. Are y'all glad I'm back? <laughs> I don't just want to know about him, I want to know him, amen? Well, in order for me or you to know him personally, we have to spend time with him. Now, brothers and sisters, just coming to church and hearing a good message and walking out of here saying, man, that was, sure was a good message. Isn't going to help you to know. It'll help you know about God, but it will not help you know Him. You see, it's that time that you spend alone with Him at home or you spend with your wife and family at home reading the Scriptures, studying the Scriptures, having uh, family by, uh, prayer time. It's that time when you start knowing who God really is and what God wants to do for you. But if you're not spending any more time than what you spend in this church, you'll never have the kind of relationship with Jesus Christ that the Bible says you can have. Amen. It's that time you spend at home. When you start studying the Scriptures, not just reading the Scriptures, Listen, a relationship don't come with getting up in the morning and saying, good morning, Lord, and then grabbing your Bible, reading two chapters, putting your Bible down, getting dressed for work, going to work, coming home from work, pray over the meal, come to church on Wednesday, sit in a pew, come to church on Sunday, sit in a pew. That will not build your relationship. Everybody say personal relationship. It's a one-on-one -on -one deal. God wants you to spend time with Him. Amen. And you don't have to spend it praying out loud. You don't have to, you can, He just wants you to be quiet. How many of you know, and I know for, I have friends that can't hardly ever shut up. Well, let me tell my friends this. If the Holy Ghost is a gentleman, and if you are always talking, he's never going to interrupt you. And you will never hear from God until you shut your mouth and sit down. Hallelujah. Short course in meditation. Sit down and shut up. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know how many years you got? I mean, everybody say two. That's the first time I've ever seen Bud raise his hand. Golly, I ought to get down and run around the room. Hallelujah. Bud loves me. Okay, amen. He raised his hand there too. Normally, Bud don't raise his hand until I say, how many of you ain't going to raise your hand no matter what I ask? <laughs> That's what I used to do too. I, ain't, I don't want to raise my hand. Amen. Well, praise God. You got two ears and one mouth. How come you use your mouth more than you use your ears? Just asking for a friend. That ain't in my notes. I just, you know, the Holy Ghost just said, throw that out there and see where it lands. Amen. How many of it landed on your toes pretty hard? One person. All right, right now we're going to have an out call for liars. It ought to step on all your toes. You know why? We just read uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 that says that all Scripture is given to so it corrects you. That it instructs you. Don't be ashamed to say, yeah, God stepped on my toes today. But don't just say He stepped on your toes. Make sure your toes out now aren't out in the aisle next Sunday. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Let me say this. When you start studying the Scriptures for yourself and when you allow the Scriptures to make those adjustments in your life, that's when you'll really get to know God. When He begins to speak to you 
and you listen and obey his counsel, that's when he starts moving in your life. You see, it's not the hearing of the word that develops your relationship with God. It's the doing of his word that develops your relationship with him. So, with that being said, never, ever be satisfied with just knowing about God. He's offering you the opportunity to know Him personally. He longs to know you personally. Amen? Are you with me this morning? The Apostle John, I love uh, 1 John. I love 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. But especially 1 John. Uh, The Apostle John talks about uh, the love of God. He talks about relationships with God. And in John, 1 John chapter 1, I start thinking about John and him writing this book. He was about really 90 years old when he wrote these books. When I think about all the miracles, all the signs, all the wonders that he had witnessed, when I think about how John could have written about any of these subjects, he chose to write about having fellowship and a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. What a legacy. It's kind of like him looking back on his life, and even though much of it was not very pretty to see, if you you study John, he was tormented. He was boiled in oil. He was sent uh, sent, uh, captive to an island. He was beaten. He suffered. So much of his life don't look very pretty. But when he, and, and here's, here's the thing. When he reflected back on his life, he didn't write about all the stuff he went through. He chose to write about how God loves you. He chose to write about how God wants to have a personal relationship with you. He wrote about how God wants to fellowship with you on a daily basis. He wrote about how you can have a close personal relationship with the Lord. And all you have to do is surrender your will to Him. What a legacy to leave. To all who are in Christ that that can't... Let me read read that. To all who are in Christ that they can have a personal relationship with God and with Jesus Christ. This is what's missing in many of the local churches of today. This is why the world and worldly ways have infiltrated the church because the saints of God are not fellowshipping with the Lord because the saints of God aren't getting into the Word and knowing that some of the things that's entering into the church, God don't want there. the moral decay of the church because the saints of God don't have a relationship with God to where they'll boldly say, no, not in this church. But I'm here to tell you, as long as I'm in this church, none of that junk's going to come in here and stay. It can come in. We love all people. Well, when you bring your problems in here, after a while, your problems need to be resolved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, you want to really know how the worldly culture got in the church? It got in the hearts of the people first. The people brought it in. The people says it's okay. We need to be all inclusive. Jesus says, I come to separate the wheat from the chaff. I come to draw a line in the sand and see what side you're going to jump to. I come to separate the sheep from the goats. Mm-hmm. Worldly culture got into the church because it got into the hearts of the people first. Listen, the only way worldly ways and worldly viewpoints become acceptable in the church if they become acceptable to the people first. 
In other words, the people who are still having fellowship with the world, who have one foot in and one foot out, they don't want to expose what's really coming into the church because they ain't getting it out of their life either. Don't shout me down now so just because I'm starting to preach good. They're bringing the worldly ways into God's house with them. And listen, you ought not be okay with that. It's okay for you not to be okay with that. What you really need is for the Holy Spirit to correct you and cause you to repent. It needs to cause you to turn away from the world and turn back to God. Are you with me this morning? That's what Peter is saying right here. He says, if we really believe that Jesus could come back at any moment, wouldn't we make the necessary adjustments in our life just to make sure we're ready? The answer is we would, right? Amen. And again, let me emphasize that there's no way the world can get into the church unless the people who call themselves Christians allow it. I encourage everybody to think about what I'm fixing to tell you. I heard a uh, good teaching here a while back. I'm not going to tell you who it was, but uh, the gentleman said this. He said, many Christians who are Christian by name only will not make the rapture. We've been preaching that here for years. You can't just call yourself a Christian and get in. You may still get to go to heaven. But there's many Christians that call themselves Christians that aren't Christians. They take on the name of Christ, but they don't take on the life of Christ and then the character of Christ. And that's all I'm going to say about that. We need to warn people. Being a Christian is something other than just saying you are. Amen? I had the opportunity to tell somebody that this morning. Hallelujah. And I hope they take heed. Because I want to see them in heaven. Praise God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. How can the world get into the church that's living holy? How can the world get in you if you're living a holy life? Didn't it just say live a ho in holy conduct and behavior? How can the world infiltrate your life if you're living holy for the Lord? Amen. How can the world and the worldly ways get in the church that's on fire for God? That's on fire for His Word? Well, the answer is obvious. It can't. You know why? Because the fire of God will keep it out. If you turn up the blaze in you, no sin can be in there. It might try to slip in, but it ain't, you ain't going to live there. Amen. The fire keeps it out. Hallelujah. Let me say, when you get on fire for God and His Word... You won't have to tell anybody. They'll know it. When you, the fire is kindled in, everybody's saying, well, man, I wish I had a revival. Well, it starts with you. Revive yourself. Amen. God ain't going to revive you. He don't have a magic wand where he can just wave it over you and get you on fire for him. You got to dedicate yourself to him. You got to consecrate yourself to him. Don't shout me down now. I'll get done sometime today. Amen. I hope I wasn't prophesying when I talked about DoorDash. <laughs> when you get on fire for God and His Word, you ain't going to have to tell nobody because your life will show it. Your life will reflect the, the life of Jesus Christ. Praise God. So, we're preaching and teaching the same thing we've been preaching and teaching for years, that the end is nearer than you think. 
So get right with God and clean up those areas of your life where you know you're not living right. Can you say amen? In other words, start living for God instead of living for yourself. And while you're at it, teach your children to live for God as well. A lot of people are teaching their children to be, uh, what are they calling it nowadays, entitled. The only thing you're entitled to as a child is uh, you're entitled to have parents that love the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Other than that, everything else is a, uh, just it's going to burn up. Start living for God. Look at this again in Second uh, Peter chapter three. And we're almost done. Second Peter chapter three, verse number ten says, "But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat." Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be? What manner of person ought you to be in holy conduct, in godliness? The Amplified in that verse, number 11, says this, since all these things are thus in the process of being dissolved, what kind of a person ought each of you to be in the meanwhile? In consecrated and holy behavior and, de oh, excuse me, and devout and godly qualities. Hallelujah. That's who I am. That's who I am. By faith. And my faith is overcoming my flesh. No, none of us are walking perfect. I'm not standing up here saying, man, I'm walking perfect in all this. No, I'm not. But you know something? My heart's right. And my body will, and my flesh will catch up with my heart. Because, you know, in my heart is my spirit man. And my spirit man is going to win. Amen? Glory to God. The Message Bible in that verse 11, I like this. It says, since... Everything here today might well be gone tomorrow. Do you see how essential it is to live a holy life? So Peter, by the way of the Holy Spirit, is telling you and me that as Christians, we ought to be living a consecrated life, a holy life, not living a life of being self-centered or out of control. Even Christians are self-centered. Many Christians are out of control. They want to keep one foot in the world and one foot in God. They want to ride the fence. Well, as my daughter said one time, Dad, they ought to get off the fence because the devil owns it. You're either for God or you're against him. There is no middle ground. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Father God, for your word. A life that is consecrated unto God is a life that is controlled by your spirit man or your spirit woman and not by the dictates of your flesh. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Galatians 5.17, uh, that the spirit and the flesh are actually against one another. That they are contrary to one another. In other words, your flesh wants to lead you by your own understanding. It wants to lead you by your feelings. It wants to lead you by your emotions. And your spirit man or your spirit woman wants to lead you by way of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. That's what that scripture is saying. I paraphrase it, but that's what it's saying. Your spirit and your flesh is always warring against one another. I want you to think about that. If you don't ever feed your spirit, your spirit will never overcome your flesh. Your flesh will always win. In other words, you've got to put the time in. You've got to put the time in. 
you know, think of it as your, the job you had. When you started, first started your job, how many of you started a job that you wanted to be promoted in? Nobody? Two of us, thank you. When you start a job or you start a business, you want, to, you want it to get better, right? You want to be promoted, right? Well, what would you have to do? You had to put the time in. Was you able to show up for work late? Was you able just to miss work and not call in? No. Were you able just to work one day a week? Everybody really like that one, wouldn't they? No. Then why do you think you can just get away with that with God? Just asking for a friend. You got to put the time in, guys. You got to put the time in. You have to read your Bible. You have to pray. You have to fellowship with God every day, all day long. You should never go anywhere without God. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm almost done. The Bible says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God. Amen. That's why it's so important that you get daily nutrition from the Word of God. That's why daily nutrition is vitally important to you living a consecrated, dedicated, and separate life, uh, a separated life unto the Lord. Listen to me, church. When I got born again, I no longer wanted what the devil had for me. Amen. I no longer wanted it. I wanted God's righteousness. I wanted to be right in right standing with Him. And Jesus gave me that. He made me righteous. I'm righteous now, not because of anything I've done, but because of what Jesus did. Oh, hallelujah. That could be disastrous. I could go back to page one and nobody would know it. When I got born again, I wanted real joy. How many of you know there's a difference between joy and happiness? How many of you ever had a new car? Anybody ever had a new car? You, it made you pretty happy, didn't it? Was you happy when you got the payment book, said you had to pay for it? No. You was happy up until the time you got the first payment. First payment was due. And then you said, oh my God, what have I done? My car was running fine. Why did I uh, uh, fall into my flesh and want a new one? Amen. <laughs> Has anybody other than me ever been there? <laughs> okay. Joy is different from happiness. Jesus gave me joy unspeakable. Yes. I wanted true peace. I wanted peace in my life, peace in my marriage, peace with my children, peace with my family. Jesus gave me the peace that surpasses understanding. Yes. And of course, we all want prosperity. I wanted to prosper. In Jesus, all my needs were always met. Amen. Brothers and sisters, everything, 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 everything that my spirit man desired, everything that the kingdom of God has to offer was made available to me Easter morning, 1997, when I rededicated my life to the Lord Jesus Christ and I started living for him instead of just saying, saying I'm a Christian. See, that's the day I gave up trying to find fulfillment in this world. Chasing the almighty dollar. Chasing the things of the world. Well, if I get bigger this and bigger that, I'll be happy. I'll have contentment. I can tell you right now, that's a lie. You've had millionaires jumping out of uh, buildings because they're so depressed that when they left, when they lost their millions, they didn't think they had anything to live for. Hallelujah. I gave up trying to find fulfillment in the world and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord 
of my life. Not just my Savior. But I made Him Lord of my life. I submitted Him as Lord of my life. How many of you know if God is the Lord of your life, you're not going to go about doing your own will? If He's Lord of your life. How many of you know the king don't let his ambassadors just live like they want to? If they do, they're not ambassadors very long. Amen? Well, you're an ambassador for Christ Jesus. How many of you know that? The Bible says you are. And you're supposed to be doing what the king says. Just a thought. Everything I ever wanted was given to me by what Jesus did, not by what I did. Amen? Now, I'm okay. oh, oh my goodness, time's gone. Hallelujah. I want to close for today. And I want to encourage you that everything heaven has to offer is made available to you the moment you get saved. But receiving the things of God into your life, listen to me very closely now, receiving the the blessings and everything heaven has to offer into your life will only come from you being consecrated, dedicated and separated unto the Lord. In other words, the things of God will manifest in your life as you purposefully line your life up with the Word of God. And I realize it's a process, but it's a process that you and I need to keep going. Can you say amen? All right, let's stand to our feet. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering. If you got anything today, praise His name. Amen. Amen. Now, <clears throat> I'm just done for today. This is really just a long introduction. We're going to c- c- probably conclude this next week. So if you've got a pen, write these scriptures down. This is your homework. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse number 17 and 18, if you'll pull that up for me. Hallelujah. I want to get it all right. Oh, it's not back there. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 and 18. It says, therefore, now look at this. Who's he talking to? Everybody say you. Amen. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate says the Lord. Do not uh, touch what is unclean. Then he says this, and I will receive you. What if you're still holding on to what's unclean? You need to let go of it. Amen? Verse number 18. And I will be a father to you, and you shall be my uh, sons and my daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. That's covenant words. I want you to meditate on those this week. And I want you to, uh, everybody needs to grow in Christ. How many of you know that? I want you to think of some things that you need to be separated from. And I want you to pledge to God and declare that you will separate from them. He's not going to pull them out of your hand. I had a lady one time says, man, I just wish God would take these cigarettes from me. I said, what for? He don't smoke. Give them up. Put them down. Crucify your flesh. Amen? All right, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Praise God. Hallelujah. What scriptures are we going to memorize and look up? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 and 18. Amen? Amen. Now, we always give everybody an opportunity because there could be people watching my live stream. Uh, this morning, there may be people in this room that really aren't sold out to the Lord Jesus Christ. And this message today is telling you, you know something, son or daughter, you need to separate yourself unto me. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's you this morning, and I'm talking to those at home too, if that's you, I want you to slip a hand up 
and put it right back down. Amen. Praise God. Let's all pray this prayer together. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son. I believe He died for me and He rose again. And because I believe that, Your Word says I can be saved. I receive Your Word and I de declare myself saved. Jesus, come into my heart. Show me in Your Word what You'd have me do. And I'll do it. In Your precious name I pray. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord one last clap offering. Praise God. Do it like you mean it. We always close out our services saying we serve a miracle working God and you are next in line for your miracle. You're